So anyway, the intake valve's in good shape. I don't think I'm even gonna, you know, uh, try to do anything with it, like lap it or anything like that. I'm gonna put it together and see how it runs. It's easy enough to get out. This is the cap that screws down on it and tightens it down in there. And this is some kind of either a compression release that will actually uh, push down open that valve. So I'm assuming that's a fresh compression release. So that's easy enough to get to the intake valve if it does need further uh, attention. Here's the water pump. It cleaned up real good. Turns easy. The packing's in good condition. I've had this off and uh, checked out the packing. It looks fine. And the rest of the parts cleaned up pretty well. Got the bolts cleaned up. Um, everything looks pretty decent on it. This is the oil breather. It, uh, it was kind of dirty and had all kinds of critter, critters inside of it. Got those all cleaned out. The, in, the exhaust spring looks very good. This is the priming cup. And uh, so it's ready to start reassembling, doing a little machine work. I'm going to try to get busy making this follower and uh, making a copper gasket right here. So I'll let you know how that goes momentarily. And we might as well look at the rings while we're, while we're looking here. Uh, they uh, are free and uh, pretty good shape. Um, so I'm not going to do a whole lot with them. I don't usually uh, put in new rings if, if the rings are good in an engine like this. They haven't seen any moisture. Uh, piston still needs to be cleaned up a little bit. I did clean the, the top of it some, but uh, I think if I clean these grooves out good and put everything back together, I think it'll be just fine. I don't usually like to re-ring them. It, uh, you know, that can cause its own set of problems too. Here's the bore looking inside the cylinder here um, again if you put rings in you gotta hone the bore and I decarboned it it looks pretty good there's no nasty grooves in it or anything so we're gonna put it right back together and uh, see how the compression is and if the compression's good we're gonna run it I'm gonna show you a lot of this but we are gonna make a big hole we can in here by drilling it. Using a step bit, they drill this thin material pretty easily. Now I'm not gonna bore you with the details of you having to watch this boring job. So when I get closer to size, I'll bring them back. Well, I got by with it. bird here. Okay, that'll work. Get my prior marks off of there. Okay, I've got you set up over here at the Grizzly bandsaw. This is a wood cutting bandsaw, but for copper and aluminum and other soft metals, it's fine. A wood cutting bandsaw runs way too fast on the teeth per minute here to uh, cut uh, steel or anything like that. So, but I can get by with it um, on this saw, I think.
Okay, I'll try to get rid of as much as the, of the black ink as I can. That'll get me pretty close to it. Yeah, pretty close. See if it fits. Oh yeah. There we go. That part looks good. And the valve sets in it just fine. There we go. Now, as with any gasket, or seal. The object is to seal the gases. So there's microscopic there's a microscopic surface on here and in the cylinder that need to be sealed against gas escapage. So anytime you work copper like this it hardens it and this copper is kinda hard to start with so I'm gonna anneal it, heat it up and anneal it make it soft so that when I clamp this valve cage down in there it will uh, conform to the microscopic surfaces and seal up. So our next step is going to be to heat it up and anneal it. Okay, I got it set up here on a fire brick. So let's heat this thing up and uh, start the process of annealing. Oh, wait a minute, that's not going to work. Hang on. There we go. The object is just to get the copper red hot and let it cool off. And it should be soft at that point. And when it's that soft, it can be smashed into the surfaces and do its sealing magic. Okay, here it is. It's turned an interesting color. Copper does that when you heat it. And I can just, uh, I can just barely bend it so I can tell it's real. It doesn't take much to bend so I can tell it's real soft. So it's ready to, ready to go in the engine. 